Marcy Bailey, citizen of North Reading, and I'm here today with Steve Valenti, also a North Reading citizen. And we've joined together, uh, along with other concerned citizens, to talk about the 40B proposal at 20 Elm Street for 200 apartments. We're concerned about the impact on the environment and our community at large. So we'd like to share with you today a little bit about the scope of the project, the 40B process, and how you can help us oppose this project. So Steve, if you could start by talking about the, um, the scope of the project, the 200 apartments, and sure, what that's certainly. gonna look like. Yeah, absolutely. I Thanks. think, uh, thank you everybody for your time and, and your consideration. We are looking at, or facing a project that's um, much too large for that side of town. Um, it's like, as you mentioned, it's over 200 apartments. It'll, it's proposed to consist of over uh, 20 three bedroom apartments plus 80. 80, that's correct. Of the two bedroom apartments and then uh, several one bedroom apartments as well. 100. 100. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then it also consists of having over 300 parking spaces. And you know that brings into light um, a lot of considerations that we're we'll discussed today about traffic flow, effect on school systems, and how to affect also um, the sewer discharge. Uh, there's actually going to have to be for that size of a scope of a project, a, a wastewater treatment plant. And obviously, we're concerned with the, what that'll affect not only in our local North Reading community uh, and the water there that feeds into the Ipswich River itself but all the downstream communities, uh, which would, could be seriously affected. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we'd like to bring to light all those considerations and look for everybody's support. So lots of people have asked us, how, how can this be built in that area? It's a semi-rural area where Middleton, West Peabody, Linfield, and North Reading meet, yep. and there's nothing of that density and scope. And we'd like to talk a little bit about the 40B law. Yeah, I think the process and making the citizens of North Reading uh, understand what the, the ZBA involvement is, the town selectman involvement, and the 40B process for the state of Massachusetts. Right. Uh, maybe if you could touch on that a little bit, Marcy, that would be great for everybody to understand. Sure. 40B is an affordable housing law, as you know, in Massachusetts, and it allows developers to circumvent local zoning bylaws to be mm. excused from sticking with the zoning bylaw in in their particular property or their particular neighborhood. So, so if there were setbacks or something like that or density, you could only have a single family home on a one acre lot because of ZB, because of the, the 40B, they could, the developer could do something that exceeds that. Exa exactly. Okay. So that's um, in a residential district, Residence A, and it um, allows for, w without going for an exception through the ZBA, mm -hmm. through the 40B law, it would allow for about 10 to 12 single family homes on that property. And as you said, instead, we're facing potentially 200 unit apartment buildings right. with um, five, five stories, parking garage underneath, things of that nature. Yeah. And the way that happens is the developer applies to the local zoning board of appeals for a permit. Now, one step that happened previously to that yep. that I want to make sure everybody understands is the developer, and any developer, not just in this case, has to apply to mass housing for, for permission. And Correct. sometimes you might have heard the, the term, it's been approved by mass housing. And we kind of want to dispel that because that's not, not quite true. Yeah, it's, absolutely. I, instead, I could talk to that for a second. Yeah, and I could think you that's talk an important to that? point yeah. for everyone to realize. There is, um, there's a, a process where the developer actually goes in and, and asks mass housing to consider that property as a site that's developed, could be developed for affordable housing. And when they do that, the mass housing comes in, does some quick um, kind of investigation to make sure that the property is suitable in their mind. But you got to remember the state of Massachusetts has a desire to build affordable housing. So their goal is to approve everything if they can. And it just means approving the consideration. It doesn't mean the project is actually approved. It just means that, yes, mass, house, mass housing will support for them to present to the local town ZBA right. their considerations. Right, right. So to reiterate what Mass Housing said was the developer is allowed to make application with the ZBA. The ZBA then down the line can approve it or they can very well deny it yes. because in the Mass Housing application, there were no specifics about what, it, what will happen to the environment, 
traffic, public safety, things of that nature. They just say overall, this piece of land could be developed, could be developed yep. as, as housing, but that's all. They stop there. They don't look at any of the other laws. And while the Correct. ZBA can excuse zoning bylaws in terms of density and things, environmental laws still apply. Absolutely. They still have to be certain that public safety can do its job in North Reading and that when people in North Reading from all the way on the east side at 20 Elm Street to all the way on the west side at Edgewood and north to Andover, that when they pick up the phone to call for public safety assistance, fire, police, police, fire, EMT, anything. that they can get there. So the ZBA is going to examine that and the environmental issues and conservation looks at the wetlands, all those things. So there's all kinds of steps and the project is not approved yet. And right, so when folks say, by, yeah. folks say, why are you fighting? Or we're making the town aware, you know, trying to make sure that all the considerations are reviewed 110% to make sure that you know every every box is ticked, and we we believe that when that happens, that there's going to be opportunity for the ZBA to deny it based on factual basis of why why the project can't work for right. the health and safety of the environment and health and safety of the citizens of the town. And and speaking to that, we, we're um, you know public safety and all that that inclu that's inclusive of people who live near the property, um, who have obligate well. That means mm -hmm. they have to. There's no public water for them. They have to get their water from the well water, yeah. and if you have discharge from a factory, you know basically a, a, a chemical treatment plant <laughs> yeah. that's uh, yeah. you know, going to be dumping nitrates and everything else into the groundwater that flows into the Ipswich River. Or, you know, unfortunately, in the last ten years, we've probably had three 100-year floods. <laughs> um, it's been crazy the weather. Uh, so, you know, natural disasters happen and occur can affect that. And that would certainly affect obligate well owners mm -hmm. that border that property, as yeah. well as people downstream who get their water from, and businesses, not just not just people, yeah. um, get their, their water from the Ipswich River. So Steve, one thing that I want to point out is yeah. when we talk about affordable housing and folks ask, well, are you against affordable housing? We most certainly are not. No. Um, mm -hmm. We would be concerned, equally concerned about this project if it was five floors of fancy lofts that right. going for a million dollars each. Um, the, the issue is the density. The density. Right. Um, affordable housing, in, by definition in this project, 50 of the 200 units yep. will be affordable housing, and they're for people who make 80% of the um, median, median income, income in the area. So that Or elderly and stuff too, you right? You know, elderly, yep. nurses, firefighters, teachers, um, people just starting out in their careers, all people we want in our community, but we want them to have the opportunity to live in the right place, to not be isolated on one side of town, and not at the detriment of density in the name of affordable housing, to the detriment of many of the neighbors who live in smaller, older homes in the neighborhood. Absolutely, and the town's already trying to accommodate that right. with some of their planning they've been right. working on. Yep, yep. And another thing that we, we want to cover is um, that folks may have heard that the selectmen are looking, the select board, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> the select board is looking at an alternate plan. Oh, um, yes. And what we want to make clear is that any alternate that the select board or any other body besides the ZBA might explore with the developer cannot be approved purely by the select board. It has to come before town, town. meeting because yep. it would be a zoning bylaw change. And any zoning bylaw change that would allow more density than the 10 to 12 single family homes that it's currently zoned for requires two thirds approval of town meeting. Right, that means so, the whole town would have to be thinking this is a great idea. Right. And it's highly unlikely that everyone be right. Uh, right. excited about doing that much damage to the right. river, the waterfront, right. that, you know, and having that type of density right. inside that area. Right, so it's two parallel paths, perhaps, Correct. both of which we're watching carefully, both of which we as Defend Ipswich River communities will keep citizens informed of. Yep. But right now our concern is really the 40B um, and the public hearing is going to open very soon, yep. and we want, want to inform folks of that. And now, how do people stay informed? What, what's the best method? Well, the best method is, coincidentally, <laughs> you should ask Steve, is to go to our website, which is defendipswichriver.org. Yeah. And um, we encourage folks to visit that frequently. You can actually sign up there. We're not going to slam you with lots of spam. We're going to just send you information about the project. So yep. they can go there, 
register and you'll get regular email newsletters updates meeting reminders you can get a sign um, if you don't want to get emails you can just i encourage folks to visit there once or twice a week to look at our events page and see what meetings are there and um, they could we will post the newsletters there so it's really the clearinghouse for everything you need to know folks who um, like social media mm -hmm. can follow defend Facebook, ipswich yeah. river communities defend ipswich river communities is the group Correct. Um, you can follow that on facebook and there's also information there but by nature we can't post quite quite as much information on on facebook and facebook may choose what it likes facebook is funny it chooses yeah. what it likes <laughs> to show you so if you go to our website defendipswichriver.org you can choose what you, what you want to see and see all the information and and you know going back to the the local community Community and the people that are surrounding that property, Defend Ipswich River, it, our goal is to help join all everybody together as a collective resource to hire experts mm -hmm. and hire um, people that uh, understand the risks that are involved, whether it be traffic, schools, water, any of those type of things. And, and frankly, that, that takes money. And, and we've been, uh, as opposed to having an individual citizen have to front that money. We're pooling all that money together as a group mm -hmm. to help hire the right people so we can get the right information uh, in front of the people that are making educated decisions. And you got to remember for the town, the ZBA board, they're volunteers. They're not experts in water and watershed and um, your drainage and everything else. They have to either depend upon uh, town people or uh, their local ex their local internal people or they have to go out and hire experts themselves if they're challenged so our goal is not to challenge them but to provide them with information that's accurate uh, not information that the developer wants to claim is accurate right uh, so we're, we're trying to make sure kind of a, as a watchdog group that we're hiring the right people responsibly um, to cover certain things and if do you want to touch base on some of those things that we've done so far oh yes well so far through the generosity of donors um, to date we've been able to hire an attorney yep. who is an expert in, in 40b developments and in fact has successfully opposed 40b's in other towns so we've got him on board looking at all the documents um, yep. and helping to advise us of the avenues to pursue where we can find the facts we need to defeat this. We've also hired um, a Harvard um, hydrologist yep. affiliated with Harvard University who's well known in the field to look at the, some of the issues that you were talking about, about groundwater, the, right. um, you know, the, what the discharge, 35,000 gallons per day is anticipated yeah. to be discharged through the sewage treatment plant into the Ipswich River watershed. And that's gonna flow out into the river, you know, toward wells, as you said. And so we, we need an expert to show us what that's gonna say because, of course, the developer's job and the job of his team is to, to sell his, pitch the ZBA yeah. and say why it's not a problem. Right. And it's our job to uncover the facts and make sure our community is safe. The ZBA will look to do that through maybe hiring some neutral yep. um, parties and peer reviewers, but, you know, when you've got a team advocating for something right. and there's somebody in the middle we feel there's necessary to be oversight on the on the other side and that's what we're going to keep everybody the honest yeah yep. and that's what we're going to use the funding for right. to keep everyone honest to make sure that all the facts are uncovered and shared yep. as they should be no i agree and as if we pool together as a community um, we can certainly get more resources available to us and you know we ask you to come to our website um, please register and there is a place to either send in money via PayPal or through our PO box. A go, and a GoFundMe. And there's a GoFundMe page as well. And so there's several ways that you can help uh, as large or as small as you can. Uh, we're also putting these signs around town. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure. And, I'm sure you've seen them. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, if you drive around town, you've seen them. Yeah. And making people aware of the of the actual, um, you know, uh, website and all that information that's available to you. Um, and you know we're selling these for twenty dollars. Uh, that's really just, just to, to cover, cover the cost. Yeah, right? that's just to cover the cost of the actual materials and make sure that the printing uh, that we did came out professional and looks good and represents the community. 
Yeah, and, and one of the, the purposes that the sign serve is to let people know it from other communities. Yes. Be aware, as, as Steve said, there's other, um, you know, 14 other communities up and downstream, or 14 communities in total, both upstream yep. and downstream, 330,000 people, 20,000 businesses that rely on the Ipswich. They may not read the North Reading transcript or find our local Facebook page, and they wouldn't find our website or talk to their neighbors about the concerns about the project, but plenty of them drive back and forth across Route 62, oh, yeah. up and down Haverhill Street. So that's why we've placed the signs. And what we'd also like citizens to do is your friends and neighbors and relatives who maybe live in Middleton or Linfield or West Peabody on a main street yep. um, close to the project, please talk to them about it. See if they'd be willing to put up a sign so that they can make their community aware, aware of it. Yep, and and you know it should be noted that um, you know the, the project itself, who we're actually going up against is uh, Nick Yaba's group, who owns Teresa's Prime. He also owns, uh, what is it, Teresa's up on 114? Mm -hmm. um, in Middleton. In Middleton, and um, you know, he's been uh, you know a good neighbor to all of us, but frankly, we think um, right now, his uh, desire to build this project is, let's just say, oversized for that area. Mm -hmm. And we want to be careful about uh, keeping an eye on, on what his claims are. Obviously, he's, a he's acting as a developer. Um, and, you know, frankly, we, we would like to keep a, a watch on what he's doing um, and what he's proposing to the town and make sure that it can stay within... You know what his original intention was when he bought that property was to conform uh, with the ten houses, mm -hmm. uh, and now he's obviously uh, changed that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, you now I think, uh, in terms of um, other people that are involved with uh, this fight against the the uh, you know Nick Yaba's group, um, what other um, well, we're, we're trying avenues to avenues have we pursued? Yeah, we're trying to engage with environmental groups, um, both you know maybe statewide, but also lo locally. Okay. And one example is the Ipswich River Watershed Association, mm. which, as I just earlier referred to, the more than 300,000 people and businesses that rely on the water and from the river and the watershed. Yep. Um, that the Ipswich River Watershed Association seeks to protect the river for, for their benefit and for that, their safety. And um, to that end, I recently had the opportunity to sit down with mm -hmm. Wayne Castingway, who's the executive director of the watershed. And I found out that he's well aware of the project and also very concerned. And so I'd like to share that interview now with those of you watching so you can um, hear directly from expert Wayne Castingway about what the impact of this project could mean for the river. Hi, I'm here now with Wayne Castingway, the Executive Director of the Ipswich River Watershed Association. And welcome, Wayne. Thank you for coming and talking Thanks with us Thanks for having today. me. Happy to be here. Uh, as the Executive Director of the Association, Wayne is concerned with the health of the Ipswich River, the watershed, and the people who live in it and rely on it for drinking water, mm -hmm. for recreation, and other purposes. So we wanted to talk a little bit about how the proposed project in North Reading at 20 Elm Street will impact the watershed. So you're familiar with it a little bit and have seen that there's 200 apartments and five five buildings up to five stories, four stories and parking underneath. Can you talk a little bit about how such a large building and large area of impervious surface would affect the, the river being so close? Great question. Um, our mission is to protect the Ipswich River for people and nature and development unfortunately is the number one cause of harm to the river. We are not anti-development in any way and in fact our Greenscapes program we actively and proactively try to educate communities and citizens and the municipal government on how to develop in an environmentally friendly way. And it's possible to develop without impacting the river in a negative way. Because development, though, can threaten the river in, in multiple ways, we follow as an organization virtually every development project up and down the watershed that we can. Right now, it's a super busy time. We've had about a 10-year lull in development um, following the financial crash in 08, and it seems like up and down the watershed, we've got developments everywhere, so we're doing the best we can to follow them. In particular, this development, because it's so large and literally on the banks of the river, we're watching this with a lot of concern. We haven't taken a formal position yet because the plans are just proposed, and we need to see the regulatory 
regulatory process through. However, there's lots of uh, warnings that we're concerned about. Development, um, we're concerned of basically in general in three ways. One is the Ipswich River, um, a lot of people depend on it for their drinking water and as a result there's too much water being withdrawn from the watershed every day. So 200 housing units will use a lot of water and right now the state has capped the amount of withdrawals that we can take from the river forever. Mm -hmm. So we have to live within the current allocation. So that 200 new units will have to come out of North Reading's existing allocation. So that means everyone else in the town have to reduce their water consumption to accommodate that new growth. So that's one area of concern. The second area of concern, obviously, is what happens to that water when people use it and discharge it back into the ground. So clean water coming out of the river, turning it into wastewater, what happens to that wastewater when it goes back into the watershed? So that's the second area of concern. And then third area of concern is as importantly as developing the land. Development will um, affect the watershed and the water cycle. And this is a large development, so a lot of buildings, a lot of what we call in our business impervious area, so parking lots, rooftops, which will disrupt the water balance, and then the storm water that's discharged from the site. So rainwater that falls on the, all these rooftops and parking lots picks up contamination, and then that's discharged back into the river. So those three areas of um, concern we have with this and any other development. Any other of the, because North Reading may go to Andover for its water, mm -hmm. but still, it, it, you know, that's not cast in stone yet. That's right, that's right. Yeah, and um, so if we could talk a little bit about the wastewater discharge, mm -hmm. there's, um, I believe, a, as filed for now, 320 bedrooms, is according to my calculations, mm -hmm. in the project, predicted to discharge by the developers' um, estimates 35,000 gallons per day through a treatment plant right on property. And there are some risks to having the treatment plant there and to that amount of water. Right into the watershed. So can you talk about some of the, the risks of that, that amount of discharge? Yeah, you've heard probably um, out there one of the anecdotes called the solution to pollution is dilution. Um, if all of that development was dispersed in individual septic systems, um, we'd be much less concerned because individual septic systems spread out over a larger area can treat the water generally better. And most importantly, if one little septic system fails, because every wastewater system will fail eventually, mm -hmm. guaranteed. When it's dispersed across the landscape, those individual failures have much less risk. By putting all of this wastewater in one central location adjacent to the river really increases the risk substantially. And so we're very concerned about that. We unfortunately have not seen the wastewater treatment plant proposal. They have not yet proposed the plant. Um, so we really can't comment until we see the actual plans and what they're proposing. Not every wastewater system is created equal, and the regulations allow for a wide array of wastewater treatment. So we'll have to see the specific proposal, which doesn't exist yet, before we can formally con comment. However, we're very concerned, one, with that much wastewater in its location, but two, the fact that it's all concentrated, what happens when it ine inevitably fails. And the other area of concern is some technologies, even the best technologies, can't treat certain ways. For example, nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, all of that cannot possibly be removed from the waste stream. And another area of increase in consume is pharmaceuticals. Humans and society have, I don't have the facts on the top of my head, but dramatically increased the amount of pharmaceuticals we use as a society mm -hmm. just in the last 20 years. And there's really no wastewater treatment that takes those out of the waste stream. And what happens when those get into the environment? Mm -hmm. So we, we had talked a little bit about, and, and some people say, well, regulation will protect us, mm -hmm. protect us from this. <clears throat> and we, we talked a little earlier about the DEP and how there is regulation, but is it good? Does it, does it work to mm -hmm. guarantee mm -hmm. um, people, townspeople and the people who rely on the river protection? Yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of issues in that regard. So we have regulations, and then we have people who enforce and implement those regulations. And whenever people are involved, 
that there can be a wide variety of outcomes. So on both fronts, our area is concerned. Will the regulators actually enforce the regulations that are on the books? We, we can't say. And then, as we mentioned earlier, the regulations on the books are not protective enough, in our opinion, to really prevent damage to the river. And so, as we talked about earlier, the dilution to the pollution or the disbursement of the, the wastewater is an extra layer of protection because if there's one failure, it can have less effect by concentrating this wastewater in such a localized location um, when those failures occur or the inadequacy of the regulations are in place, there's much more risk. Mm -hmm. And it's a privately run system. It's ultimately a privately run system run by the developer or someone he hires That's correct. to manage the system. It's not a government <laughs> That's correct. run system for, That's correct. for better or worse. And as I said earlier, every wastewater system fails eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's a, a very, very mm -hmm. important point. And it's what do we have as mechanisms when those failures happen to prevent the damage to the environment. Mm -hmm. And the river's come a long way, hasn't it, from the health of... A absolutely. One of the successes we like to tout is the Ipswich River is one of the cleanest rivers in Massachusetts, if you can believe it. Water quality generally in our river is comparable to anything out in the Berkshires. Hmm. Um, and but it wasn't, know, always, it, it wasn't, wasn't always, that, always way. that way. And so things are improving. Um, so what we really have to do is prevent that success from um, going backwards. Right, and projects like this can contribute to going backwards that, instead that, of forwards. That's right. I mean, obviously every development, as I said earlier, can be conditioned and permitted in a way that it can be less impactful in the environment. So that's really what we have to ensure that happens here. Yeah, but this concentration, as you know now, and I understand you don't have all the information, none of us do, is the concentration is, is concerning. Absolutely. It bears close watching. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and we'll be advocating through the regulatory process to reduce that risk as much as possible. That's great. And how do you recommend for people who are concerned about this project to, to advocate, concerned about the river and, and the health of the people yeah, who I mean, use it? These projects are actually beneficial because they help to increase public awareness. And so through projects like this, people become much more aware of the great resource they have in their backyards. So in that regard, you know, they're, they're positive in an mm -hmm. odd way. However, specifically, I would recommend that people get engaged locally. We are a volunteer nonprofit organization. We have absolutely no regulatory authority whatsoever. All we can do is bring people together mm -hmm. and express our concerns in a professional way. And provide way. your expertise. But it's really yeah. the local citizens that are key to the process. Um, you know, don't rely on us. Um, get involved, particularly at the local level, at the ZBA, the Conservation Commission. Make your concerns known at the state level and reach out to us and we can advise you on how to get involved. Great. This has been really helpful. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we finish up? No, I would just like to emphasize that last point. Use us as a resource and like anything in life, it's really up to people to get involved. Um, to affect the quality of life we have in our communities. Thanks. Well, we appreciate your concern about this project and your concern for North Reading, and I'm sure you'll be hearing lots from us, and we'll be hearing lots from you. Uh, Look forward to working together, and um, let's work to, to pr continue to protect the river. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. You're welcome. So now you've heard from Wayne the concerns. You've heard from us the concerns. Um, there's some other concerns that we should also bring up that we haven't really talked about okay. yet today. I mean, there's... We talked about how the developer sometimes um, tries to spin things. They put together a traffic study. You know, it's 39 pages of traffic study here. And you know, some of the interesting things that came out, uh, number one, it was done in the dead of winter mm. when 90% of the greens is... Um, in Florida, maybe? In Florida or someplace <laughs> warmer. Um, and there's really no weddings or uh, large events going on. No at golf. The, uh, and no golf, of course. So this traffic study, again, this was done in a, and the timing was probably on purpose where traffic is very light. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk for a moment about some of the things that we, we've learned about traffic in that area? And well, I've, I've read the study yeah. um, and it showed that there's going to be almost 1,100 car trips wow. per day, which you could imagine. There's you know, 200 apartments, there's over 300 bedrooms. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's going to be a lot of people coming, coming and going to work and to school and to other activities. So 1,100 car trips a day added to, you know, Route 62 that's a one-lane road. Now, some of them might go 
west yep. toward North Reading Center. And when you think about that scenario. Oh boy, that traffic behind the lights in yeah, the morning. Yeah, if you've seen that, there's no, when you, when you head west, you know, toward North Reading Center yeah. or someone's trying to go over to 93 oh, or crazy. Um, up or down Haverhill Street, there's no alternate route. You go that way. And if you've come by in the morning, you see the traffic backed up right in front of the public safety building oh, absolutely. at rush hour constantly. So that's going to add many cars to that. And then coming eastbound in the afternoon, um, I personally try to avoid that intersection maybe between four and six o'clock because you can be backed up all the way to Central 20 minutes, Street. Yeah, it's crazy. And you know, and as we discussed, if uh, the fire truck is over on the west side of town or the ambulance and it needs to come east, they're going to be behind twenty, you know, twenty minutes of traffic, which folks will pull over. But it's not, it's not going to be a quick trip. Yeah, and this, that, this stresses a lot of the, the public resources that yeah. the town's fighting yeah. with right now. And, and we referred to Middleton and Linfield. Mm. So if you read the traffic study, it kind of estimates how many people are going to go west and how many people are going to go east. And you know, many, many people are going to go east and go to that intersection of 62 and Boston Road, which yeah. is a tricky intersection as Back it is. In Middleton, Middleton Center, yep. Linfield, yep. Yep. West folks, Peabody. Yep. Folks on River Street, yep. folks on, you know, I believe it's called Boston Road, which yes, is, is 62 yep. toward Middleton and Main Street and Linfield. Um, hundreds of cars a day are going to outlet that way. In and out, yeah. That way too. So the traffic study, you know, it rates intersections. I read it um, because I'm a geek. I read it <laughs> uh, from a, you know A to F based on. Um, Mostly what I understood was the time that you wait at the intersection, right. but it, it, it really minimizes it and that just with hundreds of cars um, going, that, that just doesn't ring true. And, and, I and think again, that, that study was done at a, probably an right. inappropriate time of the year because uh, right. that all area gets much more congested right. during the summer right. when all those residents come back and golf events are going on and there are pool events going on. Um, so. Right, and that's an example of what our organization would oversee and bring up to the ZBA right. and ask them to conduct a peer review. And if you know we were not, we did not feel that that was adequate, we could use funds to conduct our own traffic study. Right, and um, just just try to get to you know what what the truth is, not painting it in a positive light right. or a negative light, but what the truth is, because folks in facts. North Reading yeah, are going to experience that every day. Right, and ZBA has to make their decisions based on facts. Right, right. So we we're here to help provide those facts so they're accurate. Right. Um, another thing too is schools; they'll be impacted. I mean, uh, there's we don't know yet. Uh, there's been proposal of how many kids are could be in there, yeah. um, but the developers' pitch on that was very light. Um, you know, we think that the schools could be affected by this. We also think, um, you know, certainly our, our, our biggest concern is probably the river, though. You know, we talked about the wastewater um, and treating that. Um, we really need to m make sure that, you know, that's going to be a, a, a project that's not monitored by a third party group is going to be monitored by, monitored by the developer himself. That's right, the developer or whoever he chooses to manage. Right. the facility, manage the, the treatment plan. And and that, as you heard, folks who were watching just heard Wayne talk about that yeah. and concerns about um, nitrates, phosphates, pharmaceuticals. The, oh, yeah. he, he talked about how pharmaceutical use is so much higher now and that goes right into the water. Right into, into the, the water, right water, into the watershed. Yeah. And, um, you know, Wayne, Wayne also talked about how um, in single family homes, the septics are smaller and um, the, the impact is diluted. And when right. you get something that's putting 35,000 gallons per day from one area into the watershed, that's a concentration that's of tremendous concern. So, you know, we're concerned about public safety, traffic, we're going to watch all those things. Concerned about schools, though, we've studied the 40B law and that's not, right. that's not a reason a community can deny. No, project. we can't deny on that, but it does mean that the, the, the parents and everyone else should be aware. Should be aware, yeah. Right, and, yep. and it could affect everybody in town. Yep. But it comes back to the environment and really right. the, the health and safety of folks in North Reading and folks in the 14 other communities. Oh, one thing that we wanted to uh, bring up and make sure that we covered is uh, another side point with regards to the town itself has actually spent quite a bit of money that was actually funded by Mass Housing's group. Mm -hmm. And can you, do you want to touch base on, on how that process is and, and what's involved with that? Yeah, it's called the Housing Production Plan. Yes. 
And um, many city, not all, but many cities and towns have um, pursued a housing production plan in Massachusetts. And it identifies areas in the town that are appropriate for affordable housing because they, they tick some of the boxes that Mass Housing wants, which this project does not. Um, they're maybe walkable to services, near a town center, um, just friendly for both the people who live in the neighborhood now and friendly for the people who will live there. So um, we had that plan. It was approved by Mass Housing. Mm. And then because um, in the 40B law, if you have 10% affordable housing in your town, you have safe harbor. Because we were at 9.6%, even though we had an approvable, approved plan yeah. that, that was approved by the state and funded in part by the state, um, the developer was able to slip in. So what we're really supporting and advocating to um, our state senator and to our state rep, Brad Jones, and to the governor is that if the if Massachusetts, if the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is going to support both monetarily and ideologically cities and towns to make create housing Their production plans, plans yeah. that show we're here, we know what works for our town, that show that, and before we even had a chance to embark on the plan, or as folks say, before the ink was dry, yep. this slipped in and um, because we're below that 10% yes, number. Yes, and we didn't even have the chance to put the plan into action. It was only a few months after the plan was approved. So it's almost like the, the developer knew that this could be coming and, and got that in there now. Could be. Yep. And so, unfortunately, now we're faced with a project that's, you know, frankly, has no consideration for the local zoning, um, and we need to make sure. Or, yeah, and the, and the planning. So if folks hear the term housing production plan or hear us in meetings refer to how this doesn't align with the housing production plan, that's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, because the town took into consideration things like, you know, where, you know, are there, is there public transportation? And that's what mass housing wants to see. Yeah, and, and right there's now, not much, but, but their walk, walkability. Walkways for people to get into town and all that right. stuff, whereas out on that edge of town, there's really nothing now. No, there. you can't buy a carton of milk without going. You know, no, you got to jump in the car and drive, right? Drive or you know, on foot for two right, miles. Right, but somehow so. the developer checked off the box that there's public transportation yeah, if over there. If you read the report, it says that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll we'll keep. You know, we're exploring every avenue, and we're going to keep um, keep on top of the housing production plan along with everything else. So I think we'd like to wrap up by again summarizing. Of uh, we we hope that you share our concern, mm -hmm. you watching share our concern. And um, if you do, we'd like to ask you to take a couple of um, actions, which we're again going to summarize here and pop up on the screen afterwards. So if you need to jot something down, you, you can do that. So what we want people to do is go to our website, defendipswitchriver.org, keep abreast, um, attending meetings. Yes. Go to That's the town critical. hall meetings, go to the ZBA, ZBA meetings. meetings. Uh, attendance is critical because the more people that they see are interested, the more compelled they are to actually listen to all the studies and, and try to right. digest it all. Remember, everybody in the town is pretty much a volunteer in terms of the ZBA and selectmen mm -hmm. and everything else. So um, they're, they've got busy lives too. Um, they can't read everything, but if they got a whole bunch of people that are there concerned, they might take a little extra time to make sure they understand all the actual facts that are there. Right not just what's been presented by one right. very interested party, meaning right. the developer. Right. So your attendance helps make sure that they scrutinize yes. uh, you know, everything. And you may be watching this at, you know, in the fall at any time because yeah. this project's going to go on for, this process is going to go on for a long time. The ZBA has 180 days during which to keep the public hearing open. So it's six months. Right. So we'd like to mention, you, like I said, you could be watching this anytime, but we'd like to mention that the first hearing is on August 8th, Thursday, August 8th, yep. 2019. So that's coming up. Uh, we don't have details yet on the time and location, but again, if you go to our handy website, you can find that we'll there and we'll, we'll send yep. it out in newsletters and emails if you sign up. Yep. So come to that meeting and keep coming to other meetings. It's a marathon. Um, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Yeah, and we're in it for the long haul. We are. <laughs> and, and we hope that you are too. Um, you can also buy a sign at the website. Yes. So do that. We'd like folks to do that and ask uh, neighbors who live on highly trafficked routes in North Reading and surrounding sounds, so, signs, or surrounding yeah. areas. And we'd like to mention, Steve mentioned that the signs are $20 to cover the cost because we want all our donations to go toward the experts. Right. Um, 
If you'd like a sign or you know someone who likes a sign and we understand the $20 may not be in your budget, we have some generous sponsors who live on quieter streets and are concerned about the project. And um, if you can, it's, it's confidential. You can ask on the website for a signed sponsor and we can place one in your, in your busy, you know, on your busy street, right. but you, you won't have to pay. We'll have um, another generous neighbor who is concerned about the project sponsor that. Yeah. for you. Thank um, you. And I'm trying to th and, and donate if you can donate. Mm -hmm. um, if you can donate more than once, we don't want to be greedy. You know, this project is a lot about greed and we're not trying to be about greed. Yep. We're trying to be about opposition. So if you've donated and a few months down the road, you can donate again. We appreciate it. Um, well, yeah, I mean, every, every donation goes to our group and then our group goes through a, uh, with the, the uh, advising of our uh, legal expert. Mm -hmm. He tries to take our funds to say, okay, we should now hire certain types of experts that he's already used along the way to fight mm -hmm. other towns uh, development projects, or I mm -hmm. should say other developers in other towns. Yeah. And that, that playbook has done very well by them. And uh, so, you know, we've gotten through the first phase of, of our, and we were successful in uh, raising enough funds to get our first phase up and running on, on time. So, um, you know, obviously there'll be more phases and we're going to be watching as a developer uh, navigates uh, the, the, the town's EBA and tries to present things, we will then probably come up with new things that we're going to have to research. Uh, at that point, we'll be asking for more donations possibly. So stay tuned to our website, please. And that's, that's where it helps for you to be registered and get um, the newsletters that we put together. Um, and you know, we'll try to keep everybody yep. informed. Yep. So thanks, Steve, for the opportunity to have this conversation and share oh, it with, with other folks. And we'd like to thank you for watching and taking the time and um, considering what we've shared with you today. And hopefully we hope that you'll join with us to uh, oppose this project that's um, too dense and too dangerous for, for North Reading. Uh, I'd like to stick with us another minute and we'll pop up on the screen um, just reiterating some of our information and of where you can go for more information and how you can help us. So thanks everyone. We hope to see you at lots of ZBA meetings going forward.